What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Gaming with the Broscast, episode 98. My name is Harrison. I am joined by my brother, my co-host, as always, Nick. Ever so closer to episode 100. We, we are getting so, so close, and I, I never thought we'd get there. And we're coming up, I guess, the the next podcast we'll, we do will be just about the two-year anniversary yeah. of the Gaming with the Broscast. Yep. Yeah, so, I think yeah. it was a couple of days before your birthday, so. It was right on my birthday. Or, oh, it was on your birthday. Podcast. That's what I was. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we talked about uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, and I can't remember what else. I, I think you were probably playing, I think you were playing an Assassin's Creed or something. No, I don't think I was. I haven't played Assassin's Creed. The Valhalla was the first one I played in a long time. Hmm. Oh, 2019. Right, right before the pandemic hit. Yeah, little did we know. Little did we, we know. Were kind of ahead of the curve, though, doing this through Zoom slash yeah. Twitch to begin with. Exactly, we were ahead of the curve. <clears throat> oh, ahead of the curve. Uh, but yeah, we are. Uh, we're going to be talking about a few games this week, uh, particularly one game called Visage that uh, that I started playing because randomly because it's on Game Pass, and I texted. Mm-hmm. I texted Nick about it. And was like, man, you got you got to at least try this game out because it's freaking spooky. So, let's talk about that. And we got some. Uh, it's not a lot happening in the uh, the world of games this week, but uh, we've got a bunch of like little minor uh, details. But uh, Nick, before we jump dive into what we've been playing and all that good stuff, how was uh, how was your Halloween weekend? What'd you it do? Was pretty good. It, it wasn't as as Halloween filled as I as I anticipated, which is completely fine. Um, I'm not a big Halloween I, guy, to be honest. I don't know. See, I, I like how I like the idea of Halloween, but once it actually gets here, like once like the day of Halloween rolls around, I'm like, ah. like I don't I don't know what to do. Like I'm, I'm not going to trick or treat, obviously, because I'm. Yeah, I guess it means more when you have like I mean, on the day it itself, is. like especially on a Sunday, it's like like you're not going to throw a party because I mean most people got to yeah. work. So yeah, if you don't have kids, it's kind of like I don't know. I guess you, you just. Do watch scary movies or something the day of or whatever yeah and and that's kind of what we did on on friday i watched the resident evil movie the first one the very okay. first resident have you evil. ever seen the first one i've seen bits and pieces it's pretty it's pretty good yeah yeah it wasn't it's not bad, bad. I, it's, it's probably I, kind of cheesy now but yeah i mean it's a little cheesy but i definitely remembered the iconic laser scene oh yeah like the i mean you know yeah you that was know. kind of like kind of gross back in the day but now yeah. it's like eh it's really not it was that a bad. little cheesy. Yeah, a little cheesy. But yeah, that movie was good. I definitely want to go through it and, w- and watch the rest. You should. Um, They're, they get stupider as they go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially before Raccoon City comes out. And, and it's made by the same director. Is it so really? It is. Wow, okay. It's made by the same guy. Okay, I did same not guy know who that. that and uh, in Monster Hunter. So he rebooted it himself. <laughs> <laughs> he, rebooted it. he said, yeah, I've, I've made six movies. Wow, I did not know that. I um I mean, either way, like the trailer for the new one looked pretty pretty dumb, but I liked mm-hmm. it. So I'm surprised his wife isn't in the movie cuz she's uh what's her name? Mia Djokovic. Yeah. She's the she's the actress in Resident Evil and Monster Hunter. Yeah. So all of his all of his directorial movies. Yeah. Which is funny. And then uh, on we'll Sunday. See. Yeah, we'll see. And then I watched Army of the Dead on Sunday. That was hey, the one with them. Um, how did you like that? It's pretty dumb. It was it was fun. Yeah, it was a fun movie. Like it was it was pretty it was pretty dumb. I mean, the idea of having these kind of intelligent zombies that that form this tribe and kind of yeah. builds, you know, a, a tribe in Vegas is kind of weird, but just kind of like was, how like really how stupid people are cuz like you literally have like this I mean, it's Vegas. You have it contained within the wall. <laughs> And then, but I mean, I guess, I guess from like a stand, like a story standpoint, it makes sense. I mean, you have all this money just sitting there. So, yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but still it's like, come on, you're stupid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was a fun movie. It was, it was a good movie for. Are you going to watch the, uh, Halloween. the sequel army of thieves? Oh, I, I don't know. I mean. And I, think I, was like, I was thinking about watching. It's a pre, or excuse me, it's a prequel. Sorry, prequel. prequel. Yeah, with um, does it focus on uh, Deaton? Deaton? Uh, I can't remember his name, but whoever, whoever the uh, the, the, thief. the 
the thief guy the main yeah the vault yeah. thief guy is yeah it's with him but yeah, yeah I, I mean yeah it's it is okay <laughs> it's solid i mean I, I think Zack snyder's a, a really bad director but uh that's just me it definitely had his you, you could see you could see his lots of his, slow motion lots of slow motion lots of gore yeah. lots of splattery blood just like in uh suicide squad i mean it it, it all kind of blends together i guess but well, yeah so he, he didn't do suicide, suicide squad okay. he did that was a. Uh... oh that was james gunn that was james gunn yeah yeah oh, okay. whoa whoa man whoa <laughs> sorry okay I, I i did think suicide squad was good i yeah i'm not yeah, the, new, was the, bad. the new suicide Squad was, was was pretty solid um, yeah but yeah yeah nothing like a good solid zombie movie for halloween those, those are always yeah. classics go-to's I did. I did dress up for work on on Friday. Okay. I was Edward Collins from Twilight. Cool. Or a version of Edward Collins, except I, I wore like I had to wear a mask like when I was walking around the office and when we took our our Halloween photo and without like seeing my face because like I had a little bit of blood. I had like makeup yeah. on and my lips were a little bit redder, but with, like with a mask on, you really couldn't tell that I was dressed up in costume. So it's yeah. kind of just like. <laughs> Mom, mom did show me a couple pictures of that. I did like the one where you're staring like dumbfoundly out the window, <laughs> longing for Bella. Longing for Bella. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, it was fun. Yeah, I grabbed this and yeah, had a good time. But how how was your weekend? I saw some very scary pictures of Kellen dressed up. Yeah, so we went quite quite the ringer with uh, with Kellen this week. So um, we didn't order his costume until like Monday or Tuesday. Um, and just because he it was it was up in the air whether he wanted to be Pennywise if you mm. if you wanted to be something else. And finally, we just he decided on Pennywise. That's what we ordered. Uh, we ordered it from Amazon, and it said it was coming the Sunday of like Halloween, um, or the day of Halloween, whatever. Uh, it ended up coming Saturday, which is awesome. Um, but we had a kind of a impromptu date night with Brittany and I because um, the the grandparents came down for for Halloween just. I guess just to get him out of the house or whatever, so they could be with everybody. Yeah. Um, so my dad was like, Hey, I'm, we're going to come pick up Kellen on uh like midday or like around noon on uh, Friday. I'm going to take him over to my job so he can do a little trick or treating. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm just going to take him and, and keep the kids for the night. So we're like, awesome. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out what to do. Um, and little did we know that our, like our local movie theater opened back up like in May, which is awesome. Nice. Um, so you know together. it's halloween we we want we went and saw halloween kills um it the was kill? a it was uh it was a movie it was it was a, it was a, okay it was okay it, it was like it's a halloween movie I, you know I, you don't go into those movies expecting like i don't know something something crazy story-wise um it Speak was yourself so my biggest problem with halloween movies in general especially with this one i'm not gonna spoil anything but because it's i mean it's in the trailer but at some point, the, the main theme of the movie is evil dies tonight. You want, like, the whole town is tired of Michael Myers killing people, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So they all gang up, and they all look, they're all, fi- they try to find Michael Myers or whatever. And at some point in the movie, they end up finding him, and they beat the crap out of him. And then he does what he does, you know? Like, my thing is, is like, you there's multiple times in the movie where they had him on the ground. Like, he's quote unquote defenseless he's not really defenseless because mm-hmm. he's michael myers and he can't die but he doesn't have a weapon but they've got him on the ground like he's knocked out like you how many times have you shot him and you stabbed him and he just gets back up like behead him like i know it's super brutal but like cut his head off or like smash his head in with something like it's just it drives me insane uh i mean this is going to be a three-part movie series anyway so it's like oh was it? yeah there's the next one comes out next year and it's called halloween ends so we'll see what happens um so i mean you already go into that movie with the expectations of michael's gonna live i mean that's just what it is um and really any kind of like 80s horror slasher movie that's kind of come up through the years like you never expect the actual villain to die just they all they always go on they have to go on it's a character like yeah it's it's almost like um it's almost like if a superhero died yeah exactly that's happened but like I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like that. You don't want him to die because it's a franchise, and you know yeah. they've got got movies to do. Yeah, 
So, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty brutal movie. There was like one scene in particular that, I mean, and I, you know, I, I don't like necessarily body horror type of mm-hmm. movies like Saw and like Hostel and those kind of things, like torture, like torture porn, you know, kind of movies. But, you know, I do like a good solid, like badass kill, you know, uh, but yeah. there was one particular scene where Michael kills somebody and it's really gross. And I was like, oh God, like just it kind of threw me back for a second. And even after we, Brittany and I got finished watching, I was like, man, that, that scene would just like kind of give me the heebie-jeebies because it was just really gross. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, it was a, it was a pretty solid uh, horror movie. You know, it's definitely intense, yeah. but, uh, and it's, it's streaming on uh, Peacock too. So if, if you want to watch it from home, I def- definitely, definitely recommend if you're Peacock. Yeah, yeah, if you're paying for that service, I would say give it a shot. You know, it's a, it's a solid like hour and a half, whatever movie. So, um, but then on um, on Sunday, well, a- on Saturday, my parents brought uh, or mom brought the kids home, and uh, Kellen was pissed. You know, he did his thing. He didn't want to come home. Um, of course. And it wasn't until like eleven o'clock that night that we finally got him to try on his costume. And of course he was in love with it. And because at first we were like, the the woman got him came with the mask and he didn't want to wear a mask. He wanted his face painted. But once he saw the mask and how creepy it was, he's like, no, I want to wear it. Um, which was cool. It saved a lot of time for Brittany mm-hmm. uh, the next day. Cause she, she painted her face as well. But um, yeah, he, he loved it. He was like walking around, like being real scary and spooky. And I played like the it theme. And uh, when we went, when we went trick or treating, I had my little speaker and was playing the it theme as well um nice but we got like so halloween day we got like five houses in and he's like i'm done i want to go back to gaming and big papa's house um really we brought yeah this year we brought like our like our little cart um and we're like no we gotta at least like hit like 15 houses because there's like a lot of houses doing doing halloween uh and then finally we got him to like stay out of the cart and just walk and then he was like okay i want to go here i want to go here i want so I think it was just like, if it was like the laziness of just being in the cart, he was just ready to go. Yeah. But once we got him involved in stuff, he was he was having fun with it. But that's good. Yeah, it was a it was a good it was a good weekend. And then on um, Sunday, real quick, I just I watched Dune. Um, and I was telling Nick before the show, like it's kind of hard to, and I don't know if I just wasn't paying attention well enough, but it was hard to really understand what was going on, um, off the world of like, what is it, Arrakis? Ar- Arrakis. Once yeah. once you got on there and the story really kind of focused down, uh, it was really really easy to pay you know to to pay attention and um, follow along the movie. Um, but like just the whole house thing was strange. Like they all had like different planets. Yeah. Like who is the emperor? What does he control? Does he control all of space? Like it's really hard to kind of understand that. And then I didn't understand like where the the abilities came from. Like they're kind of it wasn't magic, but it was like these. I don't know these abilities that some people had, but some people didn't. And they, did, I don't, I don't feel like they explained that a lot in the movie. But maybe, maybe I missed it. It was like a brief kind of mentioning. I don't know. Well, I think it was from the Bene Gesserit, or okay, the, I guess whatever the mom is. I think she is. She was the one that has the powers of the voice, and right? Then, the voice, um, yeah. And then Paul has it as well, or he's he's learning it or learning to uncover it. But there's like but also other people that had similar abilities. I don't know. Like yeah. they they called it like the yeah the voice that you mentioned like the the mm-hmm. one the one lady where like he summons Paul in and he puts his hand in the box whatever like. Well, she was a she was one of the Ben Jesserits. Okay, okay. So it's all the same kind of. Um, I don't want to say species, but same type. Okay. Same character type. So I didn't really understand like why they had those abilities and why they were different, but maybe, maybe again, maybe I, don't I just, think, I don't think they explained that. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. But it was super cool. Like I liked, like, again, it's like, <laughs> you know, they, they go into space, but they're still using swords, which is pretty badass. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, but I didn't also didn't understand the armor that well. Cause like you could still stab people. So I didn't really understand the point, I guess if you were to get hit, like far away or something someone could still i guess you could still block it with the armor but again like you got close to somebody you could penetrate their shield barrier and, and kill them so uh but either way like those those criticisms aside I, I really did like the movie 
Um, yeah, it was really good. I thought excited, the, excited for the sequel, part two. Yeah. Whatever. I, I love the like the costume design in this movie too. Like the the costumes that the the Fremen wear. Yeah, or the, yeah. The, 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 uh, garb that the Furman wear. It's really, really cool. Really well, like, cool like the the Furman have like that that special piece of I wouldn't call it armor, but where it like absorbs like the the, the water from your from your skin and stuff like that, your sweat, tears, whatever it is, and, and recycles it, recycles it, and keeps your body cool. Like all that stuff was super cool. Um, and the the sandworms are badass yeah. looking. Like yeah, super cool. I really liked it. Nice. Um. But yeah, that's that was kind of my my weekend. Uh, it was a good week. It was good. It was a good Halloween. Uh, that's good to hear. Yeah, <laughs> good Halloween week. Uh, you want to dive into what we've been uh, what we've been playing, Nick? I do. Yeah, we. Right, you go first because I've been playing. talking a crap ton. So go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I do. I want to talk about Riders Republic because for one, this game's kind of flying under the radar for a lot of people. I feel like a lot of people don't even know that it came out and yeah i totally forgot until you were like yeah what did you uh, i got a game what is it i was like i dude i have no idea what did you get <laughs> so yeah yeah writers republic it's kind of like i, I don't know if if you remember steep mm-hmm. yeah. from a few years ago it's, it's kind of like that or in the that was steep. ubisoft as well right it was yeah okay. so they're trying it again which is really cool yeah except this time you have uh you can race bikes you have like bmx or kind of like bmx where you can do tricks and stuff you have snowboards skis um you have your uh your flight suit and then you have like a rocket flight suit as well oh cool and then you can like get around on a um snowmobile and stuff so there's there's a there's you have this like giant arsenal of of equipment to use okay there's like i mean the story is kind of run in the mill for like for an action sports game like this it kind of reminds me yeah yeah like it kind of reminds me of forza where you have what's that i know you just said forza i'm I'm like really weirdly excited for it because i haven't really played much forza but (laughs) yeah (laughs) go ahead well forza kind of has like three different types of um three different types of events there's like the off-road race i think there's like on road and then maybe a couple of other types of races but it's kind of like that where like you'll have like a bike race you'll have a um snowboard trick contest you know things like that and and some of the races will even switch between them Mm. in the middle of the race so you like you'll be riding your bike and then you'll go off a ramp and then you'll be flying through the air in in okay your your flight suit or your wingsuit sorry i couldn't, couldn't think of the name and then it would switch back to like snowboard or something. And and that's like one of the coolest parts of the game. And then they took that and put it in a mass event. So you have 64 players all doing this like massive race that's switching off between snowboarding, um, biking, flying through the air. I mean, you're switching like a couple of times throughout each race and you does it race does it do it automatically for you or do you have to do it yourself it does auto, it does automatically so like you go through a checkpoint and then it'll like seamless seamlessly switch you okay that's cool. over to whatever you're going through um so that has been really cool and they're kind of like timed events and i think they occur like on the hour so you know i'll be doing like some other race and then a, a, an event notification will pop up saying hey mass event is going to start in five minutes and then I'll either warp over there or pull out my like jetpack thing and fly over there. Okay. And then you cool. know you get to sit in the lobby with sixty three other people and just hang out for a couple minutes, and then you go and like hmm. I don't know, it's kind of what I wanted Steep to be. I mean, it still okay. has. I, I feel like it's it's really, uh, and 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 this happens with a lot of action sports games, but it's like super super broy and super like yeah. Cool, I did like, kind of hear about like it's like. They use, you know, like not necessarily they use this, but like totally tubular and you know just these yeah. really bro. Like this, this footy is going to be sick, dude. That nobody like, ever says, even if you're in that yeah. scene. And luckily, like they kind of front load that in the tutorial because okay. you you kind of get like video calls from a lot of people who are explaining these events, and that that happens in the first hour, and then it doesn't really happen. Okay, that's after good. that, so. It, it, it does settle down, which is good. Like I know I was getting, I was like almost embarrassed playing it in front of Alicia because like 
you know, they were just, it was just ridiculous. And I don't know. It's, I wonder why like, they even do like, cause I don't think not anybody, necessary. yeah, it's not necessarily, it doesn't make it cool. And then, and oh, then no, if it, no, if it, it drops, and then if it drops it off, like immediately after an hour and it just stops doing that kind of stuff, like, I just don't understand the point of that stuff. It's weird. And maybe there is a, a portion of society that does talk like that. You know, people who are really in on snowboarding or in on biking, but I don't, I don't think, think so, so though. <laughs> <laughs> I've really never heard so. anybody talk like that outside of like a video game. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really jarring and it's super weird. And you know, it's not like bogging down my enjoyment of the game in any means, but the first hour I was just like rolling my eyes, like, uh, just let me it's play. Like, I'm about to, I'm about to throw my headphones on because you're, you're embarrassing me, man. <laughs> Um, but the controls are also really good. They kind of yeah. plays like skate does where you're, well, you can, you can choose between two different control schemes, but the one I chose, you use the right stick to, to do tricks or do you do your right stick to like jump and you kind of like pull it in one direction and then flick it in the other and you'll spin or you'll do a front flip and then you'll use the rest of the buttons to, to do grabs and stuff. And okay, yeah, the gameplay is it's kind of incredible. Like the game's beautiful. Wow. Gameplay is okay. amazing. I mean, you you own it as well, so you can you could try it out if you want. Yeah, I might, but, I might, I might check it out. Yeah, no, it's it's a really fun game, and I I recommend it. If anyone tried Steep and was kind of longing for something more, I would give this a shot because this. I mean, or just, just like a big, love big playground. Yeah, snowboarding games in general. Because mm-hmm. I mean, there's more to this, but um, yeah, we, you just don't get a lot of games like in this action kind of you know sports yeah. genre and ubisoft is the only one that's ever tried really and like it, it doesn't really pay off for them but i i give them credit for for trying to do it i mean you're right like you know ea is doing skate and you know it's cool that they were forced to bring that back <laughs> by the community yeah but ubisoft is doing this stuff like no one's asking for it but they're doing it yeah and i'm, I'm really... so surprised that ea hasn't got like like an ssx tricky remaster or something like how cool would that be it, it, w- it would sell really well too just yeah. by default like yeah they did tricky yeah yeah i don't know they probably had to re- they probably had to repay for the uh like the licensed soundtrack and stuff because if you don't have that song in there it's like mm. eh, you gotta have that song in there but yeah yeah, yeah. i just yeah i mean i'm glad i'm glad ubisoft is is still trying to you know keep up with these games and, and put these mm-hmm. games out because it's uh for, other than them it's pretty much like a dead genre yeah and one more thing i wanted to touch on is you know of course it's an ubisoft map so like there's a bunch of points of interest right and <laughs> races and stuff to see and one of one of my favorite parts of it is actually the stunts that you can do so i think i've really only done for bikes so far but like there's like obstacle courses for bikes okay like, where you're like trying to ride on these small ledges and kind of jump between things. And then there's one where you're in a canyon and you're kind of like on top of a bunch of these rocks and you're trying to jump between them and, you know, do all this really, really cool stuff. And I'm like, dang, like they really, they really brought everything from the biking world, from the snowboarding, skiing. That's cool. They they really brought it all together. I thought, thought that was really cool. So yeah, that's all. I mean, that's really all I got to say about it. If you, if you're interested, I would really check it out. I mean, I know 60 bucks is, is steep, you know, no pun intended, but uh, yeah, I would, I would check it out. Cool. Very but Harrison, cool. Harrison, I want to hear your thoughts on, is it, how do you say it? Visage? Visage? I was saying visage. It may be visage. Visage? So I think I'm probably a little bit lot more into the game than you are. Um, yeah. But I just kind of, you know, after Metroid Dread, like I've been, like part of me is kind of missing, you know? It's just, I, <laughs> I'm still playing it. I'm still playing Dread. Yeah, I, I do. I, I kind of want to go back to it and, and play some more. Um, but uh, uh, so I was kind of just longing to play something. So I just happened to see this on Game Pass. Um, and, it, you know, it was like a, a, it's called Visage, a psychological horror game. And I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's Halloween, it's spooky time. Let's let's download it. And I download it, and you're instantly open with a guy 
in like his garage and he kills and this is like the first two minutes of the game he kills three people like in cold blood with a gun uh, and then it starts with you waking up like in the same area i guess yeah and then spooky stuff starts happening um the only th- the, like so i guess my main criticism is so far it's like it's weird touch like handling items because like in the first scene you have like arms and hands that are animated blah blah, blah. but going throughout the game it's it's very kind of resident evil-esque you kind of pick stuff up and you're not you don't actually have hands i guess yeah um and you're kind of you know you could move items and stuff but basically there's there's no combat um you're you're kind of going through this this house at the beginning and there's i mean i'm technically in like my first chapter but there's four or five chapters throughout the game where you focus on different people um and it's based off of an item that you pick up at, kind of in the the beginning of foyer um but yeah mm-hmm. i picked up what i can't remember what item i picked up but um you pick that up and then it kind of starts a chapter and um yeah it's it's a really i i was telling nick at the very beginning i've, I've never played a game where I've, I've just been constantly like i constantly have goosebumps like uh, you know resident evil 7 i thought was a pretty pretty intense scary game um but you know that's you know parts of, of jack just kind of constantly following you in that aspect and then you know the the other kind of spooky stuff that happens but this it's like it's all psychological it's, it's got like a sanity meter um built in as well so like you, you have to stay in the light uh there's like lighters and stuff you can pick up it's got like uh pills or medication anxiety pills whatever you want to call it that you pick up that you have to like pop when they whenever your sanity starts to fill up um and it can kill you if, if it gets too much um because i did i've only died one time but it's because like at some point in the game the the lights go out in the house and yeah it's it's really hard to kind of maneuver but um yeah man i i really i really like it it's 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 a pretty good looking game it's very yeah. very pt-esque like in like you know it's only really focusing on just inside of a home so they can really render and make the the pictures look really good the uh, you know everything from the finer details to the wallpaper and yeah it's it's a man it's it's a really creepy game it it is incredibly creepy and i i told you this before the show but i i had started i had started the game at 1 a.m. <laughs> after playing Riders Republic and i really didn't know what i was getting into yeah um and I ended up cutting it off after about 30 minutes because like I, for one, like I didn't really know what to do because I, I ended up picking up the garage key. Okay. Or, or sorry, picking up um, the key next to the front door. And that started what, what ended, what ends up being like the hardest chapter in the game. And I really didn't know where to go from there. So I looked up a walkthrough and it just told me to start with another chapter. So I restarted the game. Oh, okay. Right. That that's probably what the one I did. Probably, yeah. Um, but yeah, I restarted and did the I guess the child's chapter. And yeah, there have been some incredibly spooky moments and like the whole time you're walking through that house. I mean, like you're dealing with ghosts. So like the problem with ghosts is they can show up anywhere. Yeah. And like the the kind of the the the, the premise of the game is keeping keeping the lights on, staying in the light. Mm-hmm. to to keep your sanity in check and you know at some points like the lights will just go off and like sometimes you'll have a lighter that you can use but sometimes you won't and like when the lights go out like all hell kind of breaks loose and you just yeah. have to kind of book it for for a room or something and yeah yeah there was okay. like a there was a point where i walked into the room i walked into a room and a tv was on like an old school tv and you might, you might have gone in this room, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But it, it changed channels and it showed, and, and I don't even know like what room it was in, but it showed the view of a room, like from almost like from the bed looking at the entire room, then you could see the door. Yeah. And like, there was just like a, like a figure in the doorway. Yeah. And it just wasn't moving and it stayed there the entire time. But I, I just kept looking at it, just waiting for it to move or something. And it, it never moved, but it was just freaky like it's so it's such a scary game and like i can't yeah it's it's hard to tell in this game what's scripted and what isn't because again there is that sanity meter 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was at one point I was, um, I don't know. I just finished up this. I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything because, but uh, you, you come out of this, this one area and I come back and like the lights started flickering and then you turn around and like, there's this like naked grandma, essentially, I guess the, the older lady, Dolores in the game. And she's like facing the door and she slowly turns around. And then like, she just like the lights cut off the cut back on and she's gone. So it's stuff like that. And like my sanity was starting to rise a little bit before that. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know if that was a scripted moment or if, what it is. Um, there's also like light bulbs in the game that can like lights can break and you can find light bulbs to replace and stuff like that. So there's like a lot of like little items that you can do to help, help, help yourself. And, you know, you just constantly like just flipping on switches and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the, the one chapter I did and your, your sounded a lot different than mine is I, I chose the, the Dolores chapter. Um, and it, it starts off, you go into this room and there's like this giant kind of sheet hanging over this thing and you don't know what it is and you go up to it and it, it, it ends up falling. And then the, I think the, the TV flickers or something and you look up at like the, the, the kind of the banister above you and that same sheet is over something. So you're like, it looks like it's somebody standing there and then you go upstairs and it, and it turns out to be a mirror. Uh, and then there's like this whole mirror aspect where you warp between these mirrors. So it's, oh. it's very interesting the way they, and you're warping to different areas of the house. Um, Cause in, in this um, uh, chapter, I end up finding like a sledgehammer and you have to break the glass to activate the mirror and you can kind of see to other dimensions of the house. Um, what? But one of the creepier moments of the game is I once I got to that part and I was kind of in the upstairs area, um, footsteps start to happen in the attic. And you could look up and see like dust coming down where they're at. And they kind of follow you where, you know, the areas where you're walking. So it's it's really effective. And again, the because it's so such a confined area, it's uh, they can really do a great you know job of the details in, in the home itself. So, uh, and then eventually you make your way up to the attic and it's super creepy and yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's a really, again, it's, it's probably one of the, probably one of the scarier games I've played in a long time. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Definitely. very, very, uh, nerve wracking. Uh, thinking about it is getting me worked up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, the chapter I'm on is, is really creepy. So I, I, I want to see what else I'll, I'll probably end up finishing this because it's, kind of right up my alley with with kind of the spooky stuff but mm-hmm. um yeah it's uh it's quite good it is yeah it's it's a good game so if you're if you're into that kind of stuff yeah and it's no it's no show. combat so far like there's and again it's weird like the the first scene you have like arms and hands and stuff but uh even like when you look in the reflection of the mirror you don't see anything so it's it's weird and because i was looking at a mirror in this room and it, and it, you know, you're obviously seeing the reflection of the rest of the room, but I was like, I was like, am I looking, what am I looking at? Because like, I didn't see myself. And then I realized, oh, mm-hmm. you just, you don't have a reflection. So, mm-hmm. you know, I don't, I don't know what the deal with that is, or if that plays into the story at all. You know, I have no idea, but it's, it's a little weird. Uh, but again, I'm only on like the, and you can kind of, it, it seems like you can kind of choose the chapters any way you want to. Um so I, you know, I don't know how they're all going to tie in together, but uh, but yeah, I'm I'm really interested in this game so far. It's, it's yeah. quite cool. For Nick, sure. you played some uh, you played some Zero Mission. Yeah, yeah, I've been playing some some more Metroid Zero Mission. Um, I actually tried to boot up uh, Metroid Prime One. Oh, on really? My, okay, on my com- computer. Oh, and so doing? apparently, like <laughs> Metroid Prime is is very intensive. Okay. Like, yeah, uh, not graphically, but from like a CPU perspective. Interesting. Yeah. So you re- you need like an extremely good PC to be able to run it smoothly. And okay. I'm, I'm just using my Mac, so it was kind of chopping up. But I played through to the first boss, and then after the first boss, you lose all of your stuff, and you have your um your, awesome. your physical amnesia or, or whatever it is. And then I I went down to the to the planet. So I haven't played much, but yeah, Metroid Prime is 
is really good so far. And then the zero mission is also amazing. I mean, it's, I mean, it reminds me a lot of dread where you're yeah. kind of going between areas and you're, you're getting a new item thinking back like, Oh, Hey, like I remember this block needed a, um, a morph ball bomb to, to get past it. And yeah, just fought Kraid. And it was a very, very similar fight to dread where really he'll cool. shoot the missiles out or he'll shoot his little spikes out and you jump on top of them and, you know, attack his face and then he'll knock you back down and you, you do it again. So yeah. how, so I, I'm, I'm very, I, I've been thinking about trying to find a copy of prime. Um, I know it's, well, you, can, you can get it on Wii U. It, oh, it's on the shop. Yeah. The, oh, cool. the trilogy with the Wii motion controls. Okay. It's like 20 bucks for all three. So like a part of me wants to do that. But part of me like knows that a, a remake, a remake or remat, probably a remaster is coming. Yeah. So like I don't, I don't know if I want to necessarily, you know, not not spend the money. It's twenty bucks, but um, invest in something that I know is you know, has a potential yeah. of coming next year. That's fair. But playing playing a lot, you know, playing through Dread obviously, and going back to Prime, Nick, how different is like what what's i've never really seen much of prime so um how how does the map work versus the the 2d map like how does all that kind of stuff work so the map the map is it's almost as if they took the a 2d map and just made it 3d i mean you can see the rooms you've been in you can see okay um rooms you haven't been in you can see blocks doors and granted, okay. this is just from my 30 minutes of gameplay, but okay. Um, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty intuitive map. And, okay. you know, Metroid is kind of built around the map. So I think, you know, Prime does a, does a really good job with it. And then in, in terms of like actually finding like missiles and like missile upgrades and finding like health upgrades, it's also very similar to to something like Dread where you can see like, like right when I landed my ship on the planet, I could see a missile upgrade, um, but I needed to actually get into a morph ball to get to it. But I okay. didn't have a morph ball yet, so gotcha. it's like it, there is going to be that backtracking, right? That that, that you'd you expect, know, that, yeah, that you'd expect. And you know, I think the beginning area of of Prime, or at least when you land on that planet, there were like four separate doors are four separate points of entry and obviously you can only get to one of them or two of them but yeah it's kind of kind of have that interconnected feeling that that dread has and okay yeah i kind of want to play through it all but at the same time i want to wait for you know if there's a remaster yeah yeah i mean we'll, we'll see but yeah prime is feels really good i mean obviously it's one of one of the most highly regarded games and you know, a masterpiece in, in a lot of people's eyes. So yeah, I, de- I definitely want to go through the trilogy and mm-hmm. um before Prime Four comes out. But yeah, um, but yeah, Zero Mission is also really good. Yeah, cool. and then <laughs> and then I'm on my fourth playthrough of Dread. I'm doing going for hard mode within four hours, and I just got the gravity suit, okay. so I can now move quickly underwater so i'm pretty close pretty close to the end sweet yeah um have you played i have not played any more resident Evil 4 vr have you i've just played a little bit today okay and i'll probably play some more tomorrow i just yeah it's been a, a busy weekend and stuff but i really want to get back to it. i want to try it standing up and stuff and see how much better it feels for me mm-hmm. doing it that way yeah ashley is still annoying in the game she's still still randomly dying and maybe it's yeah. my fault maybe i need to tell her to wait back in this corner or something but yeah she dies a lot yeah but yeah still nice. yeah so still, still great um excited to to play through the rest cool um i did play a little bit of uh moon globe bay um it's okay. it's that that game that got announced uh i think it was on like xbox's like kind of like three hour like indie conference thing they had like i i don't know it was a, it was a pretty long like showing of a bunch of uh idea the xbox games um but this is the one that kind of stood out to me the most mm-hmm. um it's like a it's, it's pretty much like a fishing game 
but it starts off like like the the graphics are really really nice it's kind of like minecraft-esque kind of very blocky and stuff um but it's like uh i guess like over the top it's not quite the right word i don't know it's i mean i'm trying to figure out how to describe like ice not not isometric i don't know but anyways um the camera's kind of over the top so you're you're kind of looking down on your character but uh it starts off it's like pretty pretty rough like you're you're out on like the the bay with your with your wife or your your soon to be wife or whatever girlfriend long time girlfriend i'm not quite sure um and you're and you're fishing she's kind of like telling you the basics on how to fish and um you know there's there's some sort of like urban legend in the water that that steals people's souls or something like that um and then it kind of cuts to black and you wake up not wake up but it's three years later your your girlfriend passed away it's not quite sure uh how it happened um and your your daughter comes up and since since she passed um the, the town is kind of sunken in really bad and um like there's there's no more sale there's like no more um like no one comes and visits the town anymore, so they're not, you know, making sales, and there's just no revenue in the town. And your your daughter ends up quitting her job and comes to help you, and she's like, "You should start your your fish stand again, or whatever." Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of the the premise, and she teaches you kind of how to fish, and there's like different lures and stuff. And that's I've only played about about an hour of it so far, um, but it's pretty interesting. I don't know, I don't know if I'm gonna play more. I'm kind of on the fence. There's just I really want to play Visage and RE4. And then, I mean, this month in particular, there's so much stuff yeah. coming out. Um, so I don't know if I'll get back to it, but it's pretty interesting so far. Um, nice. But, but it's, you said it's on Game Pass? And it's on Game Pass. So it's, I mean, it's okay. free for, for free for Game Pass subscribers. Uh, it's kind of got like a little bit of like a Harvest Moon or Stardew Valley kind of vibe to it. Like you're, you're, purchasing fish and then you you take your your fish inside and you kind of go through like these quick mini games of like how you want to cook your fish do you want to fry it do you want to do you want to bake it so there's like different mini games and then you you take it outside to like your little uh right now it's like a box but you put it in your box and then you can you can sell it and people will come out through the day and and purchase your stuff um and like the currency is like shells so it's weird i don't know uh (laughs) but uh cool so far nice um, and then before we dive into news, Nick, um, you have played a little bit of the Switch Online N64 stuff. Like, how has that been for you? Because it's because I mean, uh, apparently the emulation hasn't been super great. It's it's been kind of weird. So, what have been you know? It, we it, we ended the show last week with it finally coming out. Um, I was not able to get it because mm-hmm. they wouldn't let me convert from a family plan back to a sing, single plan um and now that the reviews have kind of come out and like the experience with it um I, i'm definitely not paying 80 dollars for the family plan um in which i i planned on going back to the single plan anyways because again uh, my daughter kaylee the only thing she plays is Fortnite, so right. you play that for free so that i don't really need the family plan so but even then like i don't know how much i'm going to play this animal crossing update so i don't know you know yeah i mean i get it i get your your reservations toward this because i'm underwhelmed i i like and granted i've I've only played handheld so i really haven't had that much input lag um but I've, i've played a little bit of ocarina of time and like it just felt like really old compared to like the 3ds version which which is the best the best version of the game um and I played some some Yoshi's story. And I was I was pretty lukewarm on that one as well because I'm really not a big Yoshi fan. I'm not either. I wanna be. Yeah. I wanna like a Yoshi game, but I just haven't. They're found... just so slow. Yeah. Yeah. And and then I played Star Fox and, and enjoyed that one. Okay. But after uh yeah, after I played what was it last Monday, I haven't I haven't played since then. Really? She just played wow, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 that might be it for now. I mean, like, I just I don't know what there could be from the Nintendo sixty four library that would draw me in. 
I think I really think they should have gone like Game Boy Advance or yeah. Game Boy Color because like in my opinion, in Nintendo 64 games, they just they don't hold up. They don't. I um I actually booted up and granted this is on my fifty five inch TV. I I plugged in my converter and, and booted up uh Zelda Ooh. um and just kind of loaded up my save from and it's really weird to load up a save from twenty years ago. Um longer than that now. So that was oh, you booted up your Nintendo sixty four? Yeah, the sixty four. I plugged in my wow. little like HDMI converter. Um so that was that was cool in a way, just because like I mean, gosh, I ninety seven is when Zelda came out. So I mean, that save was twenty one, twenty three years old. So that's was pretty cool just to think about that. Um, but again, it was it was stretched out to the screen, so it didn't look good at all. Um, but again, I'm not playing like a CRT TV where it's supposed it's not, to be played, so yeah, not meant for it. Um, but I was but still yeah. wanted to play it on my Switch. And just to see, you know, how, you know, how it played and, and, but. And that's fair. And, you know, if like, I guess if you wanted to pay the extra $30 for that, I mean, it's, it's anyone's money to spend, but in in my mind, it's at, at this point, it's definitively not worth it from my perspective, because I'm not a big Sega, like I'm not a big Sega Genesis guy. Yeah. Me neither. Like I, I have like some nostalgia for the 64, but, but not, not as much as like someone like you, who's, you know, a little bit older. And that was kind of like your, one of your first. Yeah. My consoles. first, my first introduction. It was the, my, like I had the game, Game Boy Color is my first introduction to gaming. And then with, with Pokemon Blue and then Zelda was, um, you know, I, I mean, you were what, three at the time, maybe. Yeah. So like, I mean, don't have much memory of it yeah uh I K- kfc I, I'm a, I assume you're talking about baseball and so i i don't really watch a lot of baseball <laughs> i did watch like 10 minutes of uh the game last night and saw the um the grand slam but that's that yeah i don't watch a lot of baseball well is there is there a team called liquid in baseball or is it or is this a um i, I don't know if that's a baseball term or not uh, the astral astralis. Uh, I don't know if that's. I don't know. <laughs> Unless we're talking about some sort of video game thing, which I, I don't know. This could be. A, <laughs> is that a um, esports team? It could be. And again, I you know I, I don't really watch a lot of esports either. Um. So either way, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Um, oh wait, no. This is this is esports. Oh, it's esports. Okay, okay, okay. What what major is going on right now? Is it? Um, I know like the internationals yes. is over for Dota, so I don't, I don't know what other major stuff is happening. Hmm. Yeah, Team Liquid. That's uh, unless it's also a baseball team, I think it's esports. <laughs> well, you got you got the the Astros and the the Braves and baseball, so that's about it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I would definitively say that that it's not worth fifty bucks, and you know, it could be my nostalgia. I'm more nostalgic for things like the Game Boy Advance, but e- well, e- I think even aside from that, so I mean, I, I guess if you are a diehard Animal Crossing fan and you're you're so okay, pumped yeah. for this DLC, yeah. maybe maybe you you pay for this for the year, right? You pay for you pay for the year you're essentially p- paying five extra dollars for this plan which, versus what you would have paid for the $25 expansion. Granted, after the year, you don't get the expansion anymore if you don't pay for it. So, but, you know, I know people put thousands of hours in Animal Crossing. So maybe by the time you played this DLC for a year, you've gotten everything you've wanted out of it. So maybe that's worth it, but it's also something that you don't own technically. So you can't have it again unless you pay for it. Yeah, Nick. My hopes is now that this, because I mean, the online service for Nintendo has never been great since it came out. Um, you know, you got the cloud saves, and you know, you can play Smash, Splatoon, Mario Kart, kind of the big mm-hmm. three, big three online games. 
and then there's no there's no voice chat aside from like the app and who like I honestly uses- if anyone is still using that app I think I think I tried it one time and like it it kind of didn't work that well mm-hmm. so now that this Nintendo's plan has gotten up to the the price of a, you know Xbox and PlayStation plans uh, not quite as expensive yet um I mean that's that's where people really start to question this service and w- what it's worth and they just you know let's give give us a free game for a month you know give us Mario Tennis for a month or something for a free and then take it away for after the month or whatever and then it gives it I mean I think we mentioned this last week but um they they've got to do a better job at you know just you know I don't I like voice chat is one thing I'm, I I think people enough people will complain I don't think that's ever going to happen at this point uh, and that's not necessarily something I'm worried about just because I don't play a lot of online stuff and I definitely don't want to hear people talk. Um, so, that, I mean, that's that's one thing that's, a, you know, I know a lot of people do want it, but that's not, there's not something that I necessarily want, but just something similar to to Game Pass and you can you can take games away and, and bring games in and you know, get 30 third party stuff involved, you know, you know, whatever the case is, they just, they've got to do better. And hopefully over this next year, they'll, they'll bring more stuff, not just N64 games and more Sega games, but just better additions to a reason why to, to own this. Cause I feel like a lot of people next year that, that renewed or pay for this plan, are probably not going to pay for it anymore. Cause it's just not worth it. Unless unless they add another retro console and, and don't increase the price and, and you know, I don't know they're gonna do that at this point. Yeah, and that's the problem. If they if they come back here in six months or next year and they're gonna add GBA and and, and Game Boy Color games or whatever, Game Boy games, and they're like, Oh, it's an extra ten dollars, like that's ridiculous. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't I don't think the the I don't think the approach is to constantly increase when your service isn't really that great and you're paying, making people pay an extra 30 bucks for, you know, some, some bad emulation stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, it doesn't, it it doesn't make sense. And hopefully they figure it out. Hopefully they see that, you know, they're, their uh, price announcement video was the most, or their most disliked video on YouTube. Yeah. Like people are, are very unhappy about the pricing of this and about just the quality of the emulation. I mean, yeah, it, it just kind of sucks. Like, and like, granted, it's only 50 bucks. Like, that's what, $4 a month, $4 and some change. Yeah. And, it's not the end of the world, but you know you're forcing people to pay it all up front. Yeah, there's no and monthly option anymore for yeah, this. There's no monthly, which it's kind of schemey, but I guess I understand when you're not really adding any new games. Yeah. Like I mean, I, I really hope just that they, you know, whether it's they include some DLC every here, you know, every once in a while, like they do with Animal Crossing. Like that's the only reason why it's really worth it for anybody at this point. Um, is that Animal Crossing DLC is included, but hopefully that their their game plan was to get people just to buy this thing and then they'll just make it really worth its while, you know, in a few months with with other surprise additions, not just new N64 games or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, something. Agreed. But uh let's uh you want to move on to the uh to the news? Let's get into the news. Yeah. So again, not a lot of big things happened this week, just kind of minor stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, the state of play did happen on uh on Wednesday. Um or was it Wednesday yeah. or Thursday? Wednesday, right? Uh Wednesday. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of stuff there, but uh I know like Little Devil Inside, they had kind of an extended gameplay moment at the very end, which yeah. that game looks super cool. Um that looks good. I need yeah. to rewatch the trailer. But yeah, it's like it's very it's it's almost like diorama esque like looking in visuals. Um, but that that game looks looks pretty pretty cool and like kind of right up my alley for uh that type of game. 
Um, but that's kind of it, Nick. I don't really have a lot of else that I was really. The, the biggest announcement like for Ocean got announced. But that was Death's Door. Oh, that, yeah, I Switch. did. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, I was happy that it was coming to uh, the, the PS4 and PS5. Yeah. Yeah, it's coming to all consoles now, so. It's coming to Switch, too? It's coming to Switch. Nice. Yeah, so it's. it's, it's that's a. It's a, that's a more love on there. Yeah, that's probably a top five, at least. Mm-hmm. On the other uh, game of the year contender kind of thing. But, um. Yeah, yeah, good, good, is... yeah, great seeing that game get some love because that the game was quite good. Yeah, uh, that but that was it, right? I mean, was there anything else standoutish to toward you know for you? Uh, there's the Bug Snacks DLC, and then it's another free? look at. I, I believe it's free. Mm-hmm. And then look at Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and I was more. I mean, I've never played a Five Nights at Freddy's. I think maybe I played like one of the original ones. Mm. barely um i was more impressed from what i saw than the first initial kind of like launch trailer or not launch trailer but the first trailer they showed off for that it looked i don't know i don't know if i'll play it but it looks decent yeah it looks like a serviceable hard i'm game sure it'll be very very popular for like youtuber let let's yeah. plays kind of type of thing um, yeah absolutely that's cool um nick there's a bunch of game pass stuff coming out this month you want to you want to kind of read them off i, I kind of highlighted the, the major yeah. stuff there's some other stuff coming but this is kind of the major stuff yeah so the, the major items coming are it takes two uh it's coming out november 4th on game one, pass one of the best co-op experiences ever yeah by the way fantastic have you finished that by the way i'm not i plan on finishing it really soon okay really soon uh, kill it with fire that's the game where it, there's like a like spiders that are running around right something like, the, something like that yeah i, I highlighted it because I, I was curious about it when it first came yeah. out um but now it's on game pass so i'm gonna check it out here in the next couple of days mm-hmm. and then uh forza horizon 5 it's coming out november 9th yeah i think you can play it a week early if you if you pre-ordered it okay or if you bought like a special edition okay cool cool um gta san andreas or yeah, San Andreas is coming out November 11th, and that's just one part of the of the trilogy. So this is the definitive edition, and they're just putting one one piece of it on Game Pass. So if you want to buy the rest, you can. Yep, and in uh, GTA 3 is coming to PS Plus as well. Oh, that's so, cool. So Vice nice. City is the only one that's not on a um on like a service or whatever. Uh, which I thought was like maybe that you know maybe that could be something cool on Switch, but it's not coming. Yeah, um, I mean that could be like a really cool addition to the the the, the pricing plan, but you know they yeah. they they didn't do that. But uh, I, I'm super excited. Um, I've never played San Andreas, so I'm I'm really excited to see what this thing looks like. I'll definitely check yeah. this out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna check it out. And then <laughs> you know it you ready, be- Nick? It wouldn't be another year if we didn't have another Skyrim release. So, so Skyrim, what is coming in this special edition update, by the way? I think they're they're adding fishing to the game. Okay. And I, uh, maybe n- new textures and just various updates, probably more mods that you okay. can use or, or implement. I, think, I, I don't really know, mess man. with the mods a lot in Skyrim. I need to check them out. I always I liked. Either. I always liked the, the, like the dragon mods and stuff. The, it was like the the Randy Savage from wrestling. Oh yeah, brother. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I just, yeah, God. yeah, Skyrim man. It's it never stops, man. It's the game that keeps on giving. This and GTA Five are going to go down in history. Of, or yeah, I guess this GTA Five, Resident Evil Four. I mean, how many times? How many times yeah. will we will we bite? Forever, man. Forever, forever. Skyrim yeah, until it... you die. <laughs> hey, Skyrim forever. Forget about Elder Scrolls Six. We're gonna put it out on everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah, but there, there's more stuff coming to Game Pass this month. I didn't highlight it, but um, yeah, you can just look online and see the list. But yeah, there, there's some yeah. really good stuff this month. You know, something for everybody. So, 
yeah check i mean i'm i'm, I'm pumped for horizon five yeah i, I, I want to like i'm ready for like a like a, a new xbox game studios game mm-hmm. um and i mean this game looks just so beautiful so it's gonna be such a great showcase for what the the series x can do so um yeah, yeah and this, all the videos it just looks so good it just looks really good it's funny because like i'm excited Forza Horizon 4 was kind of a showcase for what the Series X can do as well. Yeah. <laughs> with its with its uh yeah, with its upgrade. That is true. Yeah. Um CD Project Red announced that no more Cyberpunk updates. They've been kind of delayed until until 2022. Um, you know. What are we gonna play? Yeah, exactly. No. Uh as as long as long as well as the uh, The Witcher 3. Um I, I don't know if that was necessarily 2021 for sure. I think but, it was initially okay, but um, and I'm more excited about that than <laughs> than than Cyberpunk. But yeah, man, Nick, who who's gonna be playing Cyberpunk in 2022? I, I mean, I will. I'll check it out. Uh, I don't know. There, there's man, it it really depends on when this comes out because the front half of 2022 is is loaded right now. So I thought they said it was Q1. Was it Q1? So and then Witcher is Q2. Good good luck. Yeah, good I luck. mean, I'll I'll definitely open it up and try it out, but to invest in like a 20, 30, 40 hour experience with so many other games coming out, like yeah, how good, much like I said, good luck. How much did you play of like three hours, maybe two hours? Really? Damn. Yeah. I'll probably just restart because I don't even remember. At this man, point, I was, I was probably 10 hours in. I just, I didn't I like stopped. Just, the world just didn't get me. It felt dead. Like, yeah. And I didn't even get to like the open world stuff. I just was, that was just the initial, you know, few cuts or, you know, few missions that you go through. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I'm, I'm more excited about this Witcher 3 update so I can finally finish that game. <laughs> don't restart it. No, I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't. If, if, I, if I were started, if I hear you talk about the Bloody Baron one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> Such I a good mission, though. Again. No, it's a, it's a great mission, but like, I know you're going to play through that. You're going to get about two, two hours deeper, and then I'm not going to hear about it again because you're going to be done. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Get lost on, uh, what, what is it? Uh, Sully's. This. What's it called? Something with an S. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Oh, The Witcher. I don't know, but the, the Witcher, the Witcher season two comes out next month. So Oh yeah. I'm gonna re- I'm gonna rewatch season one. All right, yeah, I already saw Bernie. I was gonna watch it again. She's like, oh, God, I hate this game. I hate this show. I hate this game. Uh oh, you wanna read the next one, Nick? Yeah, so Returnal is getting a suspend feature so you can suspend your run mid game and much needed I would say. yeah runs runs can get pretty long in returnal i think they can get up to like three hours so being able to actually uh save your progress and turn off your ps5 without worrying about um your, your ps5 just shutting down and, and you kind of losing your save you can spend so there, there's people are already exploiting it to turn the suspend feature into a, a save feature. Oh, and, nice. So you can save them. scum and, and come back from where you, where you saved. That's good. So I think it should be a safe thing anyways, but I, mean, I get mean? it, but uh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, well, no, you shouldn't be able to save because it's a, it's a roguelike. Well, I'm just talking about like in a mid run, like I would. Oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I'm not. Yeah, yeah like say like because if you're like suspend, but then what if your Xbox got completely turned or not Xbox? What if your PS5 got completely turned off, mm-hmm. and like that suspend is gone? Like, just give me a like a one time save or something that you could just save and come back to. Yeah, like that would be that would be nice and ideal. But uh, yeah, I mean this is this is better than what it was, and that's why I, like I was after those reports of people losing their like three, four hour runs, I was like, no, thank you. I will never play this game. Cause, cause I'm not going to sit there for three hours, four hours straight. Yeah. And play a run, like play one run. Yeah. 
That's and crazy. also, and also, I'll probably never play this game anyways because I just don't like roguelikes. So there's that. I don't know. I'll probably play it at some point. I- I'm really interested now, and in, you know, if I can get it relatively cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Sony, they started their own PC label. Makes makes sense. Yeah, I mean, with all these initiatives of bringing bringing their PlayStation titles uh, to PC. Yeah, I mean, this is just kind of the next step in that evolution. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm sure I, it's I'm sure it's I don't know the sales for all the stuff that they've put on PC, but I'm I'm sure it's probably pretty good. And it's really like they definitely have st- different approaches between PC releases because like Xbox obviously just does it day and date. Mm-hmm. Um, and but Sony's is pretty smart. Like you. You start releasing the stuff, you know, your 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 main games on the PC, you know, a year or less in advance for the sequel to come out. And obviously that's going to be on the PS5 mm-hmm. exclusively for a long time. Um, but it's really smart to kind of build up buzz and stuff. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, I wonder what percentage of people they kind of convert from having a PC or having just a PC to getting a PS5 or getting a PS4. Like, yeah. For like anyone who's playing God of War or yeah. Um, or horizon is wait, is God of War on PC? It's, I don't know if it's out yet. I think it's coming out soon though. It's coming. And then horizon that that's on PC. Yeah. I'm sure people will double dip too. You mm-hmm. know, you haven't played God of War in four years, five years, whatever. Um, four years, I think. Um, three actually. Is it, is, oh, it was a 2018 when it, Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, 28, I mean, three years, you know, play it on PC where it'll arguably run better, look better. So mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, people might double dip. Why not? Yeah. I mean, it, it can only be a good thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. More sales, more sales, more buzz more sales, more so, money, more money. Um, San Andreas is coming to the, uh, to is Oculus quest too, right? Mm-hmm. Exclusive. So, exclusive. So, so finally, finally like and granted these have been remakes but um yeah. i feel like there's not been a lot of buzz for like the quest 2 um it really here. hasn't like i mean it's always kind of been like the thing it's like the best place to play beat saber and that's about it <laughs> um and there, there's like a lot of other you know pretty decent to good vr games on there but mm-hmm. um yeah i mean b- between getting resident Evil 4 which is excellent and then you know san andreas which we don't know a lot about or how it looks but um i mean it's it's cool it is cool i I wonder how far they're gonna go with it or if they're gonna have to censor like a lot of it the first person i mean yeah i like like you 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 get in cars with with hookers and i'm assuming san andreas just like any other grand theft it, it probably will just convert to third person like it does for re4 for you know yeah. some of that stuff that's probably the way they get around that that type of stuff probably i would assume so um <laughs> it's funny though it's, it, yeah, yeah it's, for sure it's a weird game to to do this for because like it's a, yeah. it's a big game you yeah know? yeah i wonder how it's gonna run like totally and yeah i'm super curious Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, Resident Evil Village is getting free DLC. I don't know if that's the aforementioned like DLC that was announced a couple, couple months after it came out um, at E3. They announced that more DLC was coming to RE uh, Village, and it was going to be like story based stuff. So I don't know if this is that, or if it's like, um, you know, I would like maybe an even harder or difficulty mode. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, some sort of like, um, you know, I don't know if they could do like shifting around. Because what, what I really loved about RE7 is professional mode. They changed the way you got items in the story. Oh, they changed the location? Mm-hmm. Location Five of items. items and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So like stuff like that could be cool. Would they Would they do like a... Oh. like a randomizer yeah randomizer or something like that that could be really fun and i would i would definitely go back and play it for that yeah. um you know give me give me an excuse to go back to play resident evil village come on man uh, are, they, are they add like a new weapon or something or like i don't think rocket launcher was in the game so what if you had a rocket launcher 
it wasn't was it yeah no so i mean like yeah like something really cool like that like i'm surprised they haven't done anything yet or if, or if it's just going to be like more um uh mercenary like more, stuff yeah more maps or, or something yeah. like that so yeah i mean th- there's a lot they could do i mean it's it's cool that we know that we have a story dlc coming out and you know i'm wondering where that's going to go but but yeah, having a free, having a free DLC, and, and and again, we don't know if this is that, but yeah, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely pumped for for the next Resident Evil. But they had co-op to the game. I mean, yeah, they I, don't, I don't think that would happen. But um, I mean, they'd have to redo the entire story, or just Halo it. And yeah, Halo it. You just you got a second Ethan running second. around. Yeah, or it could be like the, uh, you know, some sort of weird i don't know shadow ethan shadow ethan or something like that mm-hmm. uh and then you can just like double the monsters on scratch yeah i have no idea how they could do that but yeah i mean they've got quite a bit of options it'll probably just be some mercenary stuff for this free thing but um hopefully it's something cool mm-hmm. maybe, maybe yeah. it'll just be a room with you and uh lady lady d and you can do whatever you want <laughs> fifty dollars fifty dollar dlc <laughs> people would definitely play it yeah, this is uh, the best selling DLC we've ever had. I don't know. Why is it so weird? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's gonna kind of wrap up the news. Uh not a lot of not a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of big stuff, but just kind of a lot mm. of minor stuff going on. Yeah, I guess um, in, in November and December we typically don't get a lot of news because it's just a lot of games coming out. I mean Yeah, a lot of games. A lot of games. We know we got um the game awards coming out uh next month, uh Raren. That's next month, yeah. Yeah, weird to say. Yeah. November first, man. This this year is kind of uh, just flown by. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, probably do it up again for the for the game awards. Do a stream. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll definitely do like a a good a good stream for that. Because again, when does it come out? When is the game awards? It's normally uh, early December, I believe. And it's in person this time, November 9th. December 9th? This, yeah December night uh and that is on a Thursday so yeah we'll definitely do like some sort of uh we'll definitely do like a stream and uh maybe we'll play like bingo or something or you know something fun like that for yeah. for our uh speculations and whatever um got a lot of those could speculations be fun. could be fun uh and then we got we also got uh episode 100 coming up here very soon um, so me and Nick are going to have to figure out the details for that, figure out what day we're going to stream. Cause if, um, cause we're, we're definitely not going to do it on them like a Monday or something. If we plan on having some drinks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, we might have a, a giveaway or something. We'll, we'll figure out the, the finer details and figure out what we're going to do and talk about. Um, definitely going to talk about our, what our top 10 games of all time, but like a top 25, but we'll actually, kind of dive into the top 10 yeah something like that we'll try to avoid diving too much in the top 25 but it's gonna be yeah, hard it's, it's gonna be really hard. hard it's gonna be really hard um but yeah look forward to that that stuff we'll have that we'll have uh details on that coming soon so if you want to follow us over on twitter nick where can they follow us at they can follow us at gaming wt bros that's gaming w w t bros I'm trying to enunciate enunciation enunciation and yeah follow us there we we tweet a lot and we'll tweet out when when the podcast drops when we're live um any any news anything like that so yeah check us out there um we do giveaways sometimes so yeah yeah and you can also email us any questions at gaming with the bros at yahoo.com we will answer them live Absolutely. on twitch or on, uh, on the, we'll answer them on the podcast speaking of twitch so. you can follow us over at gaming with the bros cast over on twitch um we go live every monday at uh 8 30 ish ish something like that ish, yeah something like that but Normally uh 8 35 that's yeah, that's, 35. Sweet that's a sweet spot yeah because it gives us time to, to to get ready and stuff like that mm-hmm. uh but yeah that is going to do the show episode 98 is in the wraps uh, I'm sorry for any fantasy teams out there. Uh, Derek Henry is gone. He's got a broken ankle. He's going to be gone for at least six to 10 weeks. So that sucks. Um, yeah, King Henry is, uh, 
is uh, is gone for the count. But uh, you know what? Did I, you I, have him on your team? I did not. I did not. Um, that's good. Yeah, I did not have him on my team. Uh, my Panthers did win. They finally win a game. Uh, they lost four in a row, so we finally won one. Good for them. Just took us to to lose our quarterback for uh, at least a game or so. Uh, but we should have Christian uh, McCaffrey back here within the next couple of games. So that that's something to, to look forward to. Nice. If you, if you like football. And, uh, yeah, we will see you guys. If you, <laughs> Go if ahead. you like football, if you don't, then, then, then screw you. This means nothing to you. Uh, <laughs> baseball, go Braves? Go Atlanta, I guess? And and go Team Liquid. Yeah, go, go Team Liquid <laughs> Good. For, for the eSports. We're just hitting all the categories today. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that's going to wrap up the show, guys. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.